and welcome to a new day and welcome to our daily devotions. I'm using the prayers from the Methodist worship book today and it simply starts with this, O Lord, open our lips and our responses and we shall praise your name. <clears throat> As it is Tuesday, <clears throat> there is only one body and one spirit, just as there is one hope held out in God's call to you. We hear the call of God afresh this morning to worship him, to live for him, and to grow in him. And uh, I love this uh, beautiful prayer. It says, Blessed are you, Lord our God, giver of life. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, at the opening of this day, you call us out of darkness into your marvellous light. Blessed are you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I want to read to you a few words from uh, Mark's Gospel and chapter 12. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The great commandment to love God with all of your heart, soul, uh, mind, and strength and to love your neighbour as yourself, the greatest commandment of all, the very principle on which we as Christian disciples seek to live each day, getting it horribly wrong most of the time, but getting up each new morning and trying all over again. I believe to live with all of your heart, soul, mind and strength and love of God is to live passionately is to have a passion. I wonder what your consuming passion is. There used to be a program on television called Consuming Passions. And I think it was about uh, cooking, possibly. And people I know have all sorts of consuming passions, things that they're absolutely given to. And uh, today we're invited to give ourselves wholeheartedly to God. Every now and again, you meet somebody who just seems to be such a passionate person living wholeheartedly uh, for God and one of those people uh, that I've come across in recent years is uh, Steve Martin and it's my honour today to introduce Steve to you as he shares on Chest Testimony Tuesday with you. Uh, Steve uh, is someone who came to live in this area a couple of years ago to do with his work, uh, his work uh, as the operations manager for um, CVM. Uh, Christian vision for men. Uh, he carries that vision and he carries that passion uh, all the time. Um, he, but he wasn't always involved in, in this work. Uh, he had life before that. And uh, he shares something of that today with us in his uh, testimony. Um, and related to the present situation of the uh, social isolation and distancing that we're going through. And uh, I think it's a, a season, a, a word in season. It's a, it's a message to us that will encourage us and uh, make us think today. Steve, of course, is the evangelist and he is someone who absolutely loves to introduce people and call them and challenge them to follow Christ too. So here, uh, listen out for God's call on your life today. So over to Steve. Lockdown, self-isolation, social distancing stuff. Great, isn't it? Well, hi, my name's Steve Martin. I um, I work for an organisation called Christian Vision for Men, and uh, we are based in Chesterfield. 
I attend Brimington Hall Road Methodist, uh, where I do some worship stuff on the guitar, uh, run men's stuff and uh, various other bits and pieces um, around the church and within the worshipping community. Um, I'm married to Helen, who is involved in Food Bank, uh, up at Brimington, and um, we are uh, very much enjoying being part of the church in this area, in the community. Um, I uh, We moved up here in 2013 from the South Coast, where I sp previously had spent 28 years uh, working in the Royal Navy. Um, I was uh, based in Portsmouth, my ships were run out of Plymouth, and uh, Helen also, my wife, was a nurse in the Navy. I've got two sons, one of whom works for church in Derby, and the other is in the Royal Marine Band service. So in many ways, um, isolation, loneliness, social distancing was part of um, my life when I was away at sea. Um, we ran out of toilet rolls on a regular basis, so I had to ration them, remember that very well. Um, in fact, uh, no fresh fruit, no vegetables, always happening until we got into the next port call, frequent occurrences. So some of this stuff is uh, quite normal for us. Um, the naffy, going up the naffy and finding that the bloke in front of you bought the last miles by and you're not going to get another one for six weeks. Pff, scary stuff, you know, and um, in many ways similar. Unable to see the family for six months at a time, only letters, phone calls. Church also was very different. Uh, you know, you'd have maybe a service on a Sunday if you were lucky at sea, which most of the time I was actually running. Um, you didn't see church members, you, me, I know midweek Bible studies, none of that stuff. And you just grabbed hold of any fellowship that you could get at any time um, uh, alongside or if you were fortunate and another Christian on board. And that was one inter very interesting thing, actually, because if you had another Christian on board, you you just didn't care about denomination. Uh, you didn't care whether they were a literal seven day creationist or whatever. It just just was irrelevant. Do you love Jesus? Yes, I do great let's crack on um and that was very much um much my life uh, in isolation in lockdown trying to live as a christian and and what that, that actually said was actually what's important you know what is important in life um and that's what the world is saying right now what's important in life and for me what was important was being content in christ um uh, Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, Philippi uh, and in chapter four, and he says this. Um, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. I've learned to be content in this period of lockdown. Um, and it's teaching me that all again. How are you, why, what makes you happy? What makes you uh, content? And through the revelation and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ on his act on the cross, I am content. Um, now, it doesn't mean that I enjoy being in lockdown. No. I don't really. I find many aspects difficult. Not being able to see the grandchildren. That's not easy, is it? Not being able to see my parents in care homes. My, my parents in a care home, Helen's parents in another care home, opposite ends of the country. Church, not being able to see friends and, and worship together. And the prospect of what lies ahead, this new norm that we're talking about. What is the new normal? And yes, I'm missing meeting up with my mates for a beer to talk complete and utter drivel. I don't know about you, but I'm missing that. Hey, maybe. Zoom. Sorry, Zoom. You just ain't the same, are you? There's lots I miss. And I hope I can get back to. But way back when I met Jesus, uh, as a young sailor in 1979, he's been with me through life's ups and downs, through the good bits, the bad bits. There's been good bits, there's been bad bits. There still are good bits, there still are bad bits. Joys, sorrows, long periods of separation, away from uh, my wife and my two young kids. Job changes, moves, challenging times when at sea. He was with me. And so far, I can add, he's been with me in lockdown 2020. 
I can add that to that list. I am content in him. But I want to add here, before we round up, that Paul says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty, like us, maybe before this lockdown and now. But he also says, I have learned the secret of being content. I've learned it. I've learned it. And what is that secret? The secret is trusting in the risen Christ. Now, I did that in 1979. I learned that secret. I learned the secret and the secret is simply trusting him. That's the secret. I started the journey of being content in him then at the same time. And the secret remains the same. And it ain't really much of a secret because I've just told you. It's being, being knowing Jesus as your risen Lord and your saviour. And the secret now, it's, it's learning that. How do we put that into practice? Learning more about Jesus, trusting him for everything, learning what's important in this life, realising that it's not stuff that's important or meetings or money or even physical freedom that's important. None of that. And in lockdown, surely that is that's a challenge, isn't it? It's a relationship with the living Christ that's important and then learning how that pans out over your life's journey. I've learned the secret of being content in a Pusser's grey warship, in the middle of the Atlantic, in a Force 12, literally, in a Force 12, the ship's being thrown around, you've got smelly matlows all over the place, people being sick, miles away from home, threat of danger, threat of damage, threat of sinking, all that. Yet in the middle of that, I was content. And in the middle of lockdown, challenging, freedom's gone. Not sure what's happening next. Are you, am I content in Jesus Christ? Yes, I am. I'm content in him. And I hope that you are. And I pray that you are. And if you don't know the secret to being content, the secret is trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Saviour. And I'm sure that Sean and others will be able to help you. <laughs> or I am. Drop me a line. Sean will give you my email address. We'll have a chat. Over Zoom with a beer, sorry, with a cup of tea, it's Methodist, with a cup of tea, and we'll talk you through that. Be content in Him. Cheers and God bless. Thank you, Steve. Wasn't that a blessing? And we're so blessed to have Steve and Helen um, working with us and fellowshipping with us and being part of the life of our circuit down there at Bremerton at Hall Road. So uh, God bless you all today and as you journey through this day and uh, we're particularly uh, listening to what Steve has said there. If, if you don't know Jesus, if, if you would like to know him, uh, do be in touch with myself or with Steve or with anyone you know to be a mature Christian who would help you uh, find Christ the risen Lord just as they have found him too. Okay. God bless and have a great day.